Hello there and uh, welcome to yet another special edition of Investments and Trends on your public service broadcaster, the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation. I'm your host this evening. My name is Jason Q. Dube. We're glad that you could actually spare some time to join us uh, on yet another exciting edition of your usual and interesting, very informative program dubbed Investment Trades in Zambia. And today we'll be looking at a very interesting topic of discussion and we have a very, you know, able guest that will help us, you know, discuss and look at all the benefits that lie around our topic of uh, discussion. Like it is often said, that foreign direct investment and uh, commonly known as FDI can play, uh, you know, an accelerating, obviously, growth, economic transformations de in developing countries and more so inclusive countries like Zambia. Now, countries are taking steps in improving the principal determinants, influ influencing uh, location or choices for foreign direct investors. And one of the major, you know, promotional strategies uh, that countries are using as initiatives in ensuring that they promote uh, business and growth in general is issues to do with uh, foreign direct investment. Now, this week on the show, or on the program, we discuss various initiatives that the Zambia Revenue Authority, ZRA, is implementing in supporting investments and reinvestments in the country. In studio, as my guest uh, today, I have the Zambia Revenue Authority Commissioner Domestic Taxes, Mr. Moses Shuko. It's good to have you, sir, and we hope that uh, the institution where you're coming from is well to do as well. Thank you, Mr. Dove. We are all fine and uh, are doing fine. For those people that are probably hearing the Zambia Revenue Authority for the very first time and within their mindset, every time they hear ZRA, it's about collecting taxes. Just a little detail behind what Z ZRA is capable of doing beyond the you know, layman's point of expectation of them just being people that are collecting taxes out there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dove. Uh, the Zambia Revenue Authority has got um, uh, six um, areas of, of concentration. Mm. Our mandate is, uh, is in, I can put it in six uh, areas. The first one, of course, being the assessment, uh, collection of the taxes, and ensuring that the taxes are paid at the right time. The law provides for taxes uh, and these taxes are due at particular times. So mm. the Zambia Revenue Authority role is to ensure that those correct taxes are paid when, as, and when they fall due. Mm. Apart from that, it's a responsibility of the Revenue Authority also to ensure that those taxes that are collected are banked into the government uh, account as quickly as possible. So we've got also that aspect of the Treasury aspect of it, that when all these taxes are collected, they are quickly uh, put in the right account. Uh, the other responsibility we have is to ensure that we uh, manage information, trade statistics that we, we provide uh, to government. You know, trade facilities statistics are very important. Uh, so it's one of our responsibilities to ensure that uh, information around uh, importations, what's happening uh, in the economy in terms of, 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 of business, uh, that is availed, uh, of course, to feed into, into policy making. Uh, you know, policies must uh, ride on information mm. and inf correct information for that matter. Yeah. So ZRA also plays that law of providing that information. Um, we are also responsible for facilitating trade. Mm. Uh, so you find our presence in the borders and other points of entry and exit is also to ensure that we do, we facilitate the business. Uh, we have systems and processes that enable uh, businesses to conduct their businesses in as much short time as possible. Uh, so those are some of the, the responsibilities of the, the revenue authority uh, beyond the collection of, of, of taxation. Mm. Having set that background, you know, for us and our viewers out there, uh, maybe now we can delve in, uh, into the details of the show, looking at foreign direct investment as a vehicle, and obviously for promoting business. Yeah. Um, I mean, what is your role in that area? Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Dube. Our role as a revenue authority is, uh, you know, in, whenever a business comes into our country, of course, they'll go through this process of registration and um, they, if they have to access some incentives through the ZDA, those incentives will be administered by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we actually, uh, one of our responsibilities is to administer these incentives that are available to the various sectors uh, uh, of, of the economy. Uh, so also, it is ZDA's responsibility to ensure that those businesses or institutions, when they come, uh, whenever they are liable to register, uh, we facilitate the registration. Uh, you know, there are various registrations that uh, are supposed to happen. Of course, they all register as businesses, mm. but beyond that, they all register also as, uh, as taxpayers. Uh, whether they have incentives or not, they will be registered on our, 
on our, on our system. And so we facilitate the registration of these businesses. We also facilitate uh, the, their fighting in, in case they are, they are required to file returns. Mm. But in that space, what I want to emphasize is that uh, ZRA has been ensuring that uh, as a process of facilitating uh, these processes, we are automating, we are running a modernization process mm. that is basically automating uh, our processes to a large extent. So registration, for instance, uh, for the taxpayer to register, they don't need to come to the office. They can just go to our website and then log in and do the registration from that, that space. Mm. So in short, what we are saying is that all these processes that we are uh, embarking on are meant to facilitate uh, uh, the smooth registration and operation of these businesses as they come. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, businesses, when they come, the aspects of acquiring property in terms of land and these other aspects. So we also manage those aspects of, of ensuring that uh, the process of uh, acquiring property and also the transfer, the change of, 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 of ownership in terms of property, of course, where the business will operate and things like that, are all managed mm. as, uh, in um, an efficient manner as, 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 quick as, as possible. Mm. In terms of supporting, uh, you know, to in, in, in the kind of support that you then offer to businesses, that's now we're talking of both local and foreign businesses, is the support then, what kind of support do you offer? Yes, uh, we offer a lot of support. Um, uh, you know, I can give an example, for instance, at the point of importation. Mm. Uh, apart from facilitating the importation from the custom point of view, we also manage schemes like the VAT farming scheme. Uh, this is a scheme which is meant to ensure that uh, the cash flows for the business that is bringing, for instance, equipment mm. uh, are, are mitigated so that they don't suffer a huge uh, cash flow outlay mm. at the point of importation. So we run a scheme called VAT farming for various businesses, especially on capital equipment, most of which uh, is quite costly to, to, to bring in. Uh, so instead of them paying the, the tax at the, at the point of entry, that tax is deferred. And so they benefit from the point of uh, bringing that equipment without a huge cash outlay at the point of importation. Mm. Uh, beyond that, uh, there are other issues that we facilitate. Of course, there is uh, an aspect of pre-clearance under our customs that uh, before even the equipment comes, we can actually do the custom formalities so that when the equipment comes, it does not take long at the point of entry. So there are all these services that are, uh, are offered. Uh, beyond that, of course, we, you know, we, we issue uh, tax uh, clearance certificates uh, that are required for somebody to conduct business. So that process also is, is, is provided by ourselves. And um, we have automated all these processes so that we can issue them as quickly as possible and ensure that the business is settled as soon as they can mm. and so, begin to operate. So basically, it's in what all that you've outlined, it's all about you know, s allowing the business to settle in. In an event of reinvestment, what happens? Any support that you provide for these businesses? Yes, in fact, what happens for most businesses, um, the existing ones, mm. if they want to, for instance, reinvest, mm. uh, get some more reinvestment, some of them, of course, they will even access other incentives al around the new investment. And so the, the whole process will, will, will manage it in terms of additional investment. Mm. Uh, so, um, but beyond that, of course, we ensure that the taxpayers are given sufficient information to ensure that they comply with the, the tax requirements and they are educated in terms of uh, their obligations in terms of filing returns on time and making payments where the payments are due and also any other information that they may require that uh, will, will, will help them in, in that, re that regard. Mm. Clients charter, you could run us through that as well. Oh yes, we have a taxpayer charter. Uh, this is a service standard that we have uh, spelled out, this, which spells out the standards that uh, we have promised our clients mm. that we will endeavor to deliver our services um, uh, according to those timelines in that charter. For instance, we have uh, business registration, uh, taxpayer registration. Um, we are now working with a, a standard of 48 hours. Uh, tipping registration, the same. Uh, of course, I know currently, the, because of the backlog, uh, which is happening, because of a lot of people coming in to register for the tipping because of the, the deadline in December, of course, there's been that backlog. Mm. And so it's taking a bit, of, a bit more time than the 48 hours. But ideally, in a normal circumstance, that's basically our standard, that you apply today, uh, by the end of 48 hours, uh, you've, you'll get all your certificates and, uh, and those things. We've also got other, other issues that uh, uh, we have spelled out there in terms of service delivery. Uh, the VAT refund, of course, the standard is 30 days uh, from the time of lodgement. Uh, we've got um, uh, issues of income tax refunds, uh, which is 45 days uh, from the time of lodgement of the income tax return for those that have got uh, income tax refunds. We've got customs uh, deposit refunds. Uh, these uh, uh, take 48 hours uh, from the point of submission of the claim. 
Um, we've got also issues, the tax clearance certificate I talked about. The standard that we have is 1.5 days. Uh, that document is issued. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, the, the document to be issued, like for instance, the tax clearance certificate, there are requirements that must be met. And so it entails that uh, all these timelines that we have put in, these are timelines where all the requirements uh, that go with that uh, certificate are provided. Mm -hmm. And so um, we've got other, other service standards, yeah. for instance, like response times to our correspondence and all those kind of things, the time that will respond uh, if you, for instance, uh, sent in a letter to inquire about anything else. Yeah. So there are those standards that we have in our taxpayer charter. And it's widely shared. And periodically, independent party go through to see how we are performing against that uh, standard. Uh, you, you spoke about refunds. <laughs> you oh, you yes. must be having a lot of queues. Uh, is, uh, is the members of the public aware of this? Uh, you know? Yes, members of the public are aware. You know, there are various types of refunds. There are VAT refunds. There are pay as we any refunds. Uh, they are like the customs deposit refund I talked about. Yeah, so dif different categories of, of clients will be basically pursue those ones. And uh, because of automation, so these claims are lodged in electronically and then processed from the back office. And then, um, in fact, we pay refunds in terms of transfers, bank transfers. We don't pay cash for refunds. Uh, so that process, you don't need to come and queue at our office for you to wait for a refund. Uh, what you do, you provide your details. As you log in a claim, you also provide your bank details. So once it's processed, it is uh, transferred into your account. So in terms of uh, getting the refunds, you don't necessarily need to physically come to, to our offices. Mm. Uh, at the moment, governments, uh, more especially the Zambian government, is uh, preaching the promotion of value addition. Uh, and they encouraging Zambians and many other businesses out there to embrace the culture of value addition. Uh, as you know, an authority, how are you running around to ensure that you support that particular cause? Yes, uh, for us as an authority, you see, we, uh, we play an intermediary role mm. in the sense that we are a service industry. And so businesses that are involved in the economy interact and also they, have, they interact with us on a regular basis. So in terms of from looking at it from the point of value addition, one of the things that we endeavor to do is that the services that we offer are value add and also ensure that uh, they are offered with the, as minimal cost as possible. Okay, you know, a cost to business is something which is, uh, which is we slow down uh, investment. So what we try to do is to ensure that we, 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 we cut that cost continuously up to the level that uh, we can, as much as we can. We don't want taxpayers to leave their offices and come and queue in our premise because that is lost time. So in terms of uh, add, uh, uh, supporting that, uh, that value add, the issue is that the processes, the, the services that we offer ourselves are managed in such a way that... Uh, they have reduced less cost, mm. okay? So all these processes that we are trying to, to undertake, in, in initiatives, are meant to ensure that we facilitate uh, an environment where uh, businesses, business costs are reduced. The cost of doing business is reduced. And as you know, tax, almost every business is, interacts with the tax authority and they access various services. So if they are going to spend a lot of time uh, at the revenue authority, then it entails that their, their costs will go up, okay? So from the point of the Rambo Revenue Authority, of course, in terms of those uh, businesses that uh, will require, for instance, refunds, we are processing, we ensure that we process the refunds on time and so that the business can, can move on. Mm. Yes, very it's, uh, very uh, you know, exciting to know all the you know, developments and all the efforts that you are you know, putting in place to ensure that there's efficiency, uh, more especially in the rest to embrace uh, the aspect uh, of value addition. But one would be wondering, uh, is it uh, mandatory that all investors, for instance, that come into the country uh, that want to register, they have, do they have to register with the, you know, the authority, regardless of what kind of business line they're in? Yes, all businesses that uh, intend to operate in, the, in, a, in our environment, they, 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 there is a requirement for them to register. But of course, that requirement will arise at different points. Mm. For instance, if somebody is coming in just to, or for instance, gather information at that point, they are just probably doing a due diligence. At that point, obviously, registration will not be necessary. Mm. But once they have determined that they want now to begin to operate within our space, mm. of course, it is, they are required to, to register with us. Mm. And uh, the various categories of business will be required to register for different tax types. A uh, small business, for instance, will be required to register for turnover tax. The business that has uh, um, projected the uh, uh, turnover of 800,000 and above, mm. it will be required to register for VAT. A business that is going to employ uh, workers, that uh, will be required to pay, pay as well. And of course, we'll have to register for pay as well. Mm. So depending on the kind of business and the, the levels 
uh, the bus businesses will be required to register at various points. Mm. Yes. Uh, just recently, we heard about the amnesty and, uh, and the, the figures that you were, as, as an authority, you know, releasing out to m members of the public were quite uh, very good, good figures. It seems as though there were a lot of people that turned up and you managed to raise up the numbers as well. Uh, uh, what's next, you know, from that end? The amnesty, I'm sure, I mean, it should... Yes, the message uh, is, uh, as we indicated when we were running the amnesty, mm -hmm. that... Uh, we were trying to give businesses, after observing that uh, a, lo a lot of them had actually accumulated mm. uh, huge penalties on account of non-filing of returns, non-payment or delayed payment of, of their taxes. And so these amounts had risen to a point where it was almost impossible for most businesses mm. to actually manage to, 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 to pay for those huge penalties. So the amnesty was meant to give businesses a fresh start, mm. okay, so that uh, they have relief of 100% in terms of interest and penalties, mm -hmm. uh, of course, on, on condition that they settle their principal amounts. Mm -hmm. And of course, the amnesty provided that uh, you either settle as a lump sum, and then you immediately get the, 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 the waivers mm -hmm. on interest and penalty, or you schedule your payment plan uh, to, initially it was up to 31st December, but of course the minister extended up to uh, June 2018. So those businesses, um, that settled the amounts at once, they, of course they, they, they got the waivers. Those others that uh, decided mm -hmm. to schedule their payment plans, it means the, 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 the waivers will drop at the point of, of finish, uh, paying off the, the principals. But beyond the amnesty, our message still stands that uh, we are going to step, up, to step up enforcement in all areas in terms of registration for those that are supposed to register and they are out there not registered, we will follow them up. For those that are supposed to be filing returns, and they are not doing that, those who also fall up. For those that are, are owing, for instance, they, they have filed returns and they're not paying the amounts that are, are due, uh, those ones, our debt collection will move in that space. Of course, there will be enhanced audits. And depending on the sectors that businesses are, various interventions will be, will be put in place. But of course, we'll still continue to run the awareness as well as uh, the education. Uh, so that if, uh, the public and the businesses out there mm -hmm. are knowledgeable about their obligations. Mm -hmm. And we'll support those that want to, 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 to voluntarily uh, disclose whatever they may have. So we also encourage voluntary disclosure, while at the same time we are in stepping up the enforcement. Mm. Yes. Uh, I mean, <laughs> this is very, very interesting stuff that you're doing behind the background to ensure that there's more people getting on the grid. Uh, but there are people that could have perceptions such as that, look, the moment I get myself on the ZRA radar, it means that my, for instance, my business, they would claim my business is too small. I cannot afford, you know, to be paying this amount, you know, to the commission. What message do you have to them? Yeah, the message I can have for them is that, uh, you know, the Revenue Authority collects only taxes that are due. Mm. Okay. And uh, according to your earnings, the tax will be in proportion to what you should pay. So whether you are a small business, uh, you are going to pay the amount that is due as a small business. Yeah. Okay. So if you are a medium business, your, the taxes applicable to you will be appropriate. Mm. So now if you are a small business and you are hiding, you, mm. are not, you don't want to pay those small taxes. Over a period of time, those taxes will accumulate and they will mm. become a huge amount. And so that when you are discovered at that point, uh, the chances of survival or continuing in business become mm. slim. So the point is that when you are small, you are encouraged to come through. Uh, we will educate you, we'll give you the information, and there is no need really to hide and fear. Because the only tax that will be due from you is the tax that the law has provided for. So for small businesses, I remember, uh, they are talked about uh, turnover tax. Yeah. For instance, a person selling at the market or in the street on a stand, they pay base tax. And base tax is a, a flat amount per day. Mm. So whether you come up or you don't come up, that amount still becomes due. So the, the unfortunate part is if you don't come up and then you are discovered, everything that is due has to be collected. Okay? Now that will become, if an amount has accumulated, if for instance you are supposed to be paid one quarter per day mm. and you stay the whole year without paying, that amount accumulates to 365. You stay three years, that your amount grows. So you reach a point where it becomes a uh, very, very, uh, very a huge burden on the cash flow of a business and it may threaten the survival of such a business. So my message is to encourage those businesses that they should come up. If, for instance, already they have accumulated an amount which is quite huge, mm. we still provide for time to pay agreement. Mm. There will be a process of saying, okay, so what can the business afford to survive while you are paying and also ensuring that you, are, you continue with business?
Mm. So those are, are the things that are valuable uh, to the businesses out there. So there's no, there's absolutely no need for a business to be afraid to come forth and register. We are promoting and encouraging voluntary compliance. Mm. Uh, so every business must voluntarily come up and declare, uh, uh, register and begin to, to pay. If they have a huge amount that they may not be able to deal with, there are mechanisms of how that, that those amounts can be liquidated over a period of time. Mm. I had an opportunity to read through the seventh national development plan. Yes. And I was looking at the theme. It was calling for a multi-sector approach to you know, development. Mm -hmm. In your case, how are you ensuring that you embrace all other sectors, all other stakeholders, uh, in, in to ensuring that you have a lot of people you know, adhering to the rec uh, no, rec uh, uh, tax requirements? Oh, yes. Uh, if you look at um, the Zambia Revenue Authority, it's structured in such a way that it attends to, first of all, small businesses. Mm. Uh, it also attends to the medium and also attends to the large businesses. Beyond that, uh, these businesses, even the small businesses, are also in categories. Mm. There are those like in various sectors. For instance, I can give examples of agriculture. You have those in manufacturing. They have the retail sector. So ZRA has got different in, uh, in, uh, programs for, for such kind of business. Mm. For businesses, for instance, like the ones in the, in the retail sector, uh, there is a project that ZRA is running, and that is going to introduce uh, what we call electronic fiscal registers. Mm. These are registers that uh, businesses will be required to place in their business, and as they generate their sales, uh, messages are sent to the central uh, point as Zambia Revenue Authority. Mm. As you know, probably even yourself, when you are going around in these shops and buying things, yeah. uh, I don't know to what extent you, you are given receipts or to what extent you actually demand to be given a receipt for every sale. Because that receipt that uh, you do not collect when you transact, it is the one that gives assurance that that business transaction has been recorded. And that is the one which gives assurance for the tax authority to come and confirm that the business took place and the tax due is this amount. Mm. So if you are not getting receipts as a citizen, what it means that you are facilitating a process of concealing sales, mm. which ultimately conceals taxes yeah. or leads to tax evasion. We are pressed for time, but uh, as we conclude, I'd love to hear from you really how you're working with other government in, you know, you know, agencies, for instance, the Zambia Development Agency. Oh, yes, we have very good relationships. Uh, we have got uh, various platforms mm. under which we, we interact. Uh, from the system point of view, we are creating interfaces mm. uh, so that information can easily be exchanged. Um, and also we have regular fora where we, we interact. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other... Um, 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 arrangements, for instance, the one-stop border, one-stop uh, shop concept, where you find that all these regulatory institutions that are required to attend to businesses are begin to create a presence in one spot, okay? Mm. Uh, so that you don't have to walk to Zambia Revenue Authority, then you go to ZDA, then you go to another one, Bakra, and things like that. So you find these offices now that are offering these services in an integrated and in one place, okay? So all that is meant to ensure that we facilitate um, the, the, the ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. uh, so ZRA is, is also involved in a lot of projects uh, that uh, entail working with other institutions and also ensuring that uh, most of our institutions begin to automate so that we can offer a good service and mm -hmm. cheaper service to the public. Mm. Mr. Moses Shuko, thank you so much for finding time to be with us on this uh, you know, special uh, edition of Investments uh, you know, Trends uh, tonight. The pleasure is mine. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So there you have it. I was uh, talking to the uh, Zambia Revenue Authority uh, Commissioner Domestic Taxes, Mr. Moses Shuko, who's just highlighting really, uh, you know, what they are doing to ensure that they are abreast and up to touch with all that is happening regarding foreign, uh, foreign direct investment and ensuring that they are also playing a pivotal role in uh, supporting the idea of value addition and ensuring that each and every person out there that's running a business is paying tax and at the end of it all be able to contribute effectively uh, to the development of our country. My name is Jason QD. Until we meet again next time, it's bye-bye for now. Keep watching your public service broadcaster, ZNBC.